I'm Paul McQuaid and welcome to Roaring Back. Now as the son of an immigrant whose mother came here as a refugee from Havana, Cuba in 1961, I thought what better neighborhood to start than the Lower East Side, where immigrants and migrants from all over the globe have come and left their mark on this neighborhood. In the 1800s, it was known as Little Germany. In the 1900s, it was known as the largest Jewish city in the world. It also boasts one of the largest Puerto Rican populations in the mainland US, as one of the largest Chinatowns in all of the country. So as you can imagine, this neighborhood's been through a lot and 2020 was no different. But let me show you how we're roaring back to the vibrant community it's always been. So we're actually right down the block from uh, one of my first listings, which was 99 Stan Street, the old Stanton Social. And, um, you know, it was really, really great watching them come into the neighborhood, kind of get developed, uh, even with COVID, um, to be able to open up, uh, you know, open up another spot. Dough to cheese ratio, where it's not, it's not heavy whatsoever, but you'd still get, you know, a nice amount of everything between sauce, fresh basil, cheese, um, in every bite. Um, and the crust is nice and airy, as you can see there. So not too dense, really great bite. Again, New Yorker, New Yorker's best uh, best meal on the meal on the go. Um, so you can always get get in a slice, work one in. Um, there's, I mean, besides this, there's literally what four on every block. So, but I highly recommend coming here. <laughs> Rewind 14 months ago, February 2020. Nightclubs were packed, bars and restaurants were full, and the Lower East Side was as vibrant as ever. And then COVID hit. Now the Lower East Side was disproportionately affected as the rest of the city by COVID because of its heavy dependence on the nightlife and bars and restaurants. And without clear direction from our leaders, most owners decided it was the prudent thing to do to shut down for the safety of both their staff and customers. So don't just take my word for it. Let's talk to someone who's owned businesses throughout the Lower East Side and East Village since the 80s who can shed a unique perspective on it for us. All right. Hey, Bob. Paul, How are we doing? I'm good. How are good. you? Good to see you. Good. We're here today with Bob Pearl has been owned and operating businesses as well as been a member of the community here in the East Village and Lower East Side since the mid-80s. And a great resource to shed some light on how what we've been through in the past year as well as the history of the neighborhood. Currently, Bob's the principal of Tower Brokerage as well as a partner in multiple restaurants and bars, including the one we stand in front of right now, Bolton & Watt. Bob, welcome. Oh, thank you, Paul. We are really uh, at a very interesting moment because this pandemic has been, New York was ground, ground zero and it has hit us in so many ways, wiped out our massive tourist industry, tens of millions of visitors. Uh, it has wiped out our restaurant businesses, which are been just struggling to get through with the occupancy issues. But we're at this moment where you can feel the comeback. It's, it's really happening. You go out at night and you, you sense it, the, the more people on the streets every day. The weather has a lot to do with that, but so does the vaccine. Yeah. And it's just general optimism. New Yorkers are, and the people who want to be in New York, come here for the, for the connection. It's not a place you want to be isolated. And the connections are now happening. Being as someone who's been operating here for you know, spanning multiple decades, have you ever seen anything like this before? Or has the Lower East Side and East Village been through anything similar? Or how do you see? Well, you know? while these are really bad times, they are no near, near the worst of times. Uh, Alphabet City, as the area was known, a stood for awful, B for bad, C for crazy, D for death. <laughs> Those were the words that were, were put yeah. in back in the day. And it really was a very difficult, scary area. There were so many abandoned buildings, hundreds of them on the side streets, some of them on the, a number of them on the avenues, squatters in a number of them. There was massive amount of drugs. The poverty was intense but it allowed for the artists to live here. Mm -hmm. And we're talking from the area of the beatniks in the, starting in the 50s. So today, this area has been a nexus for creatives. And we still want to keep the creative population going here, but it's 
hard, gentrification works against that. So as we see here outside of Bolton and Watt, can you take us through a little bit exactly what went down at this exact location through the protests and through COVID last year? When the riots happened, that was just like, you know, pouring salt into wounds. We're all bleeding and suddenly there's this tremendous uh, just attack, storefronts are being attacked and it, it just, it, nothing could hit, you, know, so you can't imagine that happening. Yep. And they've hit the whole building here. So that's why you see as much graffiti as you see now. But as I say, a month from now, come back, we're gonna be redoing all our painting and hopefully uh, it's gonna look really, really back to normal uh, come May. Great, I'm excited. And so when, when did you make the decision to reopen? We decided it was better to save our money and do a renovation uh -huh. than, to, than to be open right now. So we're doing a beautiful interior renovation, softening the space, kind of moving out of the steampunk look we've had for the last seven years. There'll be some new, new banquettes, new paneling, some soundproofing, the outdoors. We're going to have a beautifully set up outdoor space. Uh, so it was a good time to spend that money on the upgrade. I would say we're expecting early May to be fully operational. All right. Well, I'll definitely have to come back for a beer with you. Oh, can't wait to have <laughs> you here. It'd be great. Bob, thanks so much. All right. What a great conversation with Bob Pearl. I always find it so amazing to hear the rich history of some of the neighborhoods in New York City, particularly the Lower East Side. I thought his perspective on opening and closing businesses over last year to this year was really, really unique. And he shed some light on some really important points as we roll through and we start to roar back. So as the Lower East Side experiences some turnover, just like every other neighborhood in the city, don't worry, we'll always have some of our New York institutions. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time on Roaring Back. for stopping by. If you like what you saw, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe on the YouTube channel, and make sure you don't miss another episode of Roaring Back.